Hey everybody, uh, Dr. Deadwax Mark uh, here uh, to do another uh, recent final finds. Uh, as usual, currently I'm working my way through the uh, first buy of uh, 2012 because uh, people wanted to see what it was, and uh, now I'm working through the stuff I bought for $2. Uh, and, and this is it, uh, just a pretty small batch. Um, let me tell you, two bucks buys you some funky shit. Um, first up is uh, Freddie Hubbard. Liquid Love, awesome, fantastic record. Um, Freddie by then had uh, left CTI, uh, and he'd gone to uh, CBS Columbia. And uh, at the end of his CTI recording career, he, uh, I don't know, it was a little overproduced uh, by far. A little Creed Taylor probably there. Um, the, there was some funky kind of fusion -y stuff going on and there was a lot of um, overly produced schmaltzy string stuff so there might only be like a track or two that were real winners on an album um, that's not the case with this this record is amazing it's got a, a brilliant cover of midnight at the oasis on it that's just as funky put it in the pocket is wow uh, that has guest guitarist uh, Johnny Guitar Watson on it, um, who I subsequently found out is a hell of a guitar player. Um, hadn't heard of him until I brought this home and started to listen to it and do some research. Uh, this has a hell of a list of great players. Um, so Freddie Hubbard, Liquid Love, he's getting into his funky period here. Um, definitely recommend that you pick this up. The interesting thing about this in the Dead Wax is um, this was uh, made by Artisan. The Artisan logo is a circle uh, with a circle, smaller circle inside of it and two like uh, arms or whatever for the letter A, but some people think it looks more like uh, two drumsticks on a snare drum. So, Johnny Guitar Watson. Next was the Watsonian Institute Master Funk. Now I didn't know what this was. I mean, I know nothing about funk. I'm just a white guy from the suburbs of Canada. There's no funk in me. Um, but maybe there's starting to be. Uh, this just looked like I should buy. Total blind buy. No idea until I got home that there's any connection to this. Uh, this is fantastic. Uh, this album is smoking. Um, great songs. The Institute, Master Funk, The Funk If I Know, Lady Voodoo, uh, Dijon's Delight, Coming Around, and Virginia's Pretty Funky. Wow, this is a great record. Uh, and it just sounds amazing. It just cooks. It's got tons of thump. Um, so uh, I'll, I will be on the lookout for Johnny Guitar Watson. And I will be look, on the lookout for more of this. Um, interesting about this is... Uh, in the dead wax, there's uh, SJR inside a noble, and that's the uh, dead wax mark of uh, Stuart J. Romain, who was the mastering mastering engineer on this. And the way this record sounds, this was somebody I had not heard of until I looked him up. Wow, he's right up there with the the, the very well known names because this record is fantastic. Um, Next up is another record that's really funky, and that is uh, the Brecker Brothers, their first record. Um, and this is on Arista, this is on the, uh, the blue, like it's a baby blue uh, Arista. Uh, this, uh, some skunk funk, uh, is like one of the, is the opening tune, and that tune is just a monster. Um, you know, typical crew here for for this circle of musicians with uh, the Brecker brothers and David Sanborn and Don Grolnick and Will Lee and uh, 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 Ralph McDonald, Harvey Mason. You know, these guys always played together, played on each other's stuff. Um, there's a, a vocal track on this record where one of the Brecker brothers sings and and that's just a dog and shouldn't be on this record, but the rest of this record is really strong. Um, I don't know if I showed the back, so... If you see this record, check it out. It's, it's you know, it cost me two bucks. Totally worth it. This will get many, many plays. 
Um, what was on this? Uh, dead wax. Just had sterling. Didn't have a signature like initials, but it did have the initials PRC. But PRC is not uh, a mastering engineer. PRC stands for the PRC Recording Company out of uh, Richmond, Indiana. Who? Um, it's where the uh, actual vinyl was pressed. Um, next is uh, Diodato and Erto in concert. This is on CTI. Um, standard CTI label. You know, they must have been run out of money or I don't know what the hell's going on here, but this was the end of the sweet packaging. I mean, this is, I don't know if this ever came, did this come in a gate, like a pretty gatefold? Um, this looks like a fairly early pressing. Um, and it was only made once, uh, according to what I can find online. So it wasn't uh, reissued uh, as part of, the, I think it was the 8000 series that came later. So. Um, what can I say about this record? This could have been a brilliant record. Um, this is a good record. Uh, some great songs. Uh, Do It Again. Um, there's a song called Tropia. Uh, John Tro Tropia Tropia is on here playing guitar. Um, Creed Taylor took like this live concert that according to the applause, everybody thought it was fantastic. Back to the studio, got Bob James to write string arrangements and conduct string arrangements which were overdubbed on top of this record. So maybe there were holes to put string arrangements into, but uh, honestly I don't think they were necessary and I think this record would have been better without them. Um, it's good. I mean it's a good listen. It's, uh, it's just Creed Taylor just was overproducing things at certain times uh, and was in love with the strings and I think it killed this record and I'd love to hear this without the strings on it so um, anyway that's my take on that. Next is uh, uh, Gary Burton, uh, Dream So Real, the music of Carla Blay. Um, this is on ECM. Everybody loves ECM as do I. Um, awesome players on this record. Stellar lineup. Gary Burton, of course, uh, Mick Godrick, Pat Metheny, Steve Swallow, and Bob Moses. Uh, Metheny's excellent on this record. He's a, to me, he's hit or miss. Some people think he's a guitar god. I think he's, he can really wank it up sometimes, but uh, uh, sometimes he, he hits it out of the park, and I, I think he's hitting it out of the park on this. Um, Vibes for me personally, um, not a, not a m massive fan of vibes. It's like flute too. Like in jazz, I'm not a big fan of flute, and I'm not a big fan of vibes. I like the vibes. I I just often don't feel that they can. For me, they don't. Sometimes they're just right up at front on vibe centric records, and they're I don't know. That's just my take. I have a lot of Gary Burton too. I have probably 25 Gary Burton albums, so it's not like I don't buy them. It's not like I don't listen to them. This is possibly one of the best. Um, I really enjoyed this record. Um, so I, I recommend picking this up if you can. Um, this uh, this just has a master disc in the dead wax. It doesn't have any initials. I don't know if it's a RL or not, but. Uh, and my take on, some people are looking for uh, RL ECMs. I have several RL ECMs, Robert Ludwig, and uh, i got to say that if I have a chance to buy a non-Robert Ludwig ECM over a Robert Ludwig ECM, I will buy the non. I, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm talking about the God here, but I really don't think that uh, Robert Ludwig knew what the hell he was doing when he was uh, mastering jazz albums. But that's my own personal take. Um, next up, you know, Pudsy's got a thread, did you ever buy a record solely for the cover? No, well, I have, but uh, have you ever bought a record solely for the Dead Wax? And this, this is one right here. Uh, Rod Stewart, uh, Never a Dull Moment. Um, I knew this was a first press, or had to be really early, just by looking at it. I mean, I look through everything when I get a chance in a store, and uh, Anything that even tweaks my eye, I, I look at the record and look at the dead wax. Now, as we often know, I don't look at the label and I come home with the wrong shit, but uh, that's another story. So, but this has the original uh, original cover. 
which then has these this uh, inner that goes like this and then the record comes out of here so it's kind of I don't know what this design would be called maybe like a butterfly or something um, anyway so I knew this was something interesting so I took I, I opened it up and this is a this was a, a first pressing on this uh, early uh, mercury label and uh, I saw that GK was in the dead wax which is uh, Gilbert Kong uh, and Gilbert Kong is uh, one of the great mastering engineers, uh, one of my personal favorites. Um, he did a lot of Rush. Uh, he did a lot of uh, did a lot of really cool things, and he did stuff all over the spectrum. He did stuff from like uh, direct to disc uh, jazz records. I've got a Doc Severinsen record that he did, uh, and uh, you know all kinds of stuff. So Gilbert Kong was just doing everything. This is a uh, this is on Mercury. Um, and Gilbert Kong worked for them, and then Gilbert Kong subsequently worked for Master Disc, which w was the mastering wing of Mercury Records, which was spun off into Master Disc. Um, and then, of course, Gilbert Kong continued uh, on with them. This is an excellent sounding record. It's, you know, he certainly can make records sound good. Am I a Rod Stewart fan? No. Um, but I enjoyed the record. It, you know, it's. Uh, it's just uh, thought I'd try something different. Um, I mean, it's certainly not. I mean, I, I would much rather listen to this than like the syphilitic Tony Bennett, Rod Stewart that exists today. Um, this has Ron Wood and, and a couple of good songs, and it sounds, you know, it's a rock and roll album and it sounds good. It's mastered by Gilbert Conk, so, you know, it'll get played again probably or traded to somebody who loves Rod Stewart and likes uh, the older uh, rock and roll from that period, that kind of blues rock. Last record, uh, Absolute Monster. Uh, David Newman, Lonely Avenue with Roy Ayers. Two bucks, I can't believe I'm picking up all this great fathead um, for two bucks. Lonely Avenue, it's uh, written by Doc Palmas, a fantastic song. Uh, fuzz on this, the first track. Um, is uh, written by Roy Ayers and or Ayers, not quite sure. And Fireweaver, uh, the last track uh, by Roy Ayers. Those are standout tracks, absolute killer cuts. Um, fuzz is just this funky fuzz guitar piece. Uh, Cornell Dupree plays guitar. Who, um, upon looking it up, I discovered you know he was just another one of these great funky. Uh, guitar players uh, with a long studio career and a long solo career. Another guy I'd never heard of. Um, some of the songs have like a bluesy feel, some of them have a funky feel, some of them have a jazz feel. This is a real um, fusion album, but not being like like Miles Davis fusion, but like fusion of different sounds. It. Um, I love this record. I've hit uh, two great David Newman albums out of this batch of records that are just incredible. This will get a hell of a lot of play. Um, this is on Atlantic. This is an original. Um, it has uh, ATGP uh, in the Dead Wax, which is uh, Atlantic and George Piros, who I discussed before uh, around the Led Zeppelin records and stuff like that. So um, if you see this record, this uh, again, if you see this record, buy this record, play this record, like this record. This is a great record. Um, so that's the seven I got this time. Uh, still working my way through the stack on to the $3 records next time. Um, so that's what 14 bucks bought me. And I, I think I did pretty well. Um, so have fun digging in the dollar bins. Have a great day. Keep the record spinning.